Another application for Gauss law is the plane of charge. So here we have a plane that has a uniform surface charge density sigma. So these charges are distributed uniformly over the surface. We're interested in the electric field on both sides of this plane. In order to find the electric field, we form a Gaussian surface, which is a cylindrical surface on this plane. Now, which goes through this plane. Now you can see that the electric field due to these uh, surface charges will be pointing parallel to the area vector on the top and bottom surfaces of the cylinder. But the area vector that is uh, perpendicular to the side surface is going to be uh, basically perpendicular to the electric field so we will have no contribution from the side surface of the cylinder. So when we write the a uh, Gaussian integral, which is the closed surface electrical flux, uh, we will see that the only contribution will come from the top and bottom surfaces of this cylinder. So let's start with writing the Gauss law, closed surface integral, electric field dot product with dA, that is the electrical flux, is equal to the charge enclosed by the surface Q in divided by epsilon zero permittivity of free space. <clears throat> now the question is, what is the charge enclosed by this surface? Now you can see that we have an area here uh, that contains charge. That's basically the area of one of these uh, top or bottom surfaces. It's pi a square multiplied with the surface charge density sigma because we have a uniform surface charge density the charge enclosed will be sigma times pi a square that is the total charge enclosed and that is basically originating from uh, this uh, area here this contains the charge that is pi a square so that's inside the Gaussian uh, cylinder all right, <clears throat> so uh, because we have a uniform charge distribution, you can see that the electric field lines will be uh, pointing uniform everywhere. So we note that we have a uniform uh, field everywhere. Okay, so when we write the total flux, E dot dA. This is our total flux. Electric field on this side is pointing uh, parallel to the area vector. So if I draw the area vector here, that would be pointing like that. Uh, this is the area vector. Uh, so we have E dot dA giving us electric field uniform electric field times the area A. Electric field will only be a function of distance from this plane. And on the other side, I will have exactly the same thing. There, the area vector would be pointing parallel to the electric field also. So that surface will also give me a contribution E times A. The side surface has an area vector that points perpendicular to uh, the electric field. So this will have no contribution. Cosine 90 is zero. So the total uh, flux is twice electric field times area A because the electric field is uniform everywhere. It's only a function of distance from the surface. It comes out of the integral as a constant and we integrate over the area. We get uh, the total area. The total area for the top and bottom surfaces is basically pi a square. So we have pi a square here, pi a square here. So we will have 2e pi a square as the total flux. This must be equal to charge enclosed sigma pi a square divided by epsilon zero pi a squares will cancel and we will be left with 
an electric field that is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. So you can see that the electric field points away from the plane on the two sides and it's going to have a magnitude sigma over 2 epsilon 0. Okay, so that is uh, pointing to the right or left on the two sides on the two sides of the plane so we have a uniform electric field in fact we have found that it's not even a function of distance from the plane when we have a uniform surface uh, charge it's sigma charge density divided by 2 epsilon 0 now here is another application what happens if I have two planes with a uniform surface charge distribution charge density uh, sigma on both of them but one has a positive charge a distribution the other one has a negative charge distribution now you can see that this positive charge distribution will create an electric field e plus pointing to the left on one side e plus pointing to the right on the other side and it will be also appearing on this side of this plane, E+. Plus. And you can see that it's not a function of distance from the plane. So it's going to be appearing on these three regions. On the other hand, this negatively charged plane will have an E- minus pointing towards it. On one side pointing to the left, on one side pointing to the right. It will also appear on the other side of the positively charged plane. So we have two infinite parallel plates of charge. One is positively charged, one is negatively charged. Now what is the electric field inside? Now you can see that we have E plus contribution and E minus contribution. So if I write the electric field in between the planes inside, it's going to be the sum of E plus and E minus, and that will be equal to sigma over epsilon zero in i hat direction if i call this my x-axis pointing to the right uh, what is the electric field outside outside of these planes now we have uh, sigma over 2 epsilon 0 in plus i hat direction uh, for example if i consider uh, this side here here e, here e plus is pointing to the right, sigma over 2 epsilon 0 plus i hat, but e minus is pointing to the left, minus sigma over 2 epsilon 0 i hat. So we will have outside electric field being 0. So the net electric field outside of two um, parallel plates of charge will be 0 uh, when they are oppositely charged and inside it will be sigma over epsilon zero. Okay, so we have gone through one more example of uh, application of Gauss law. That's for the plane of charge. When we have a uniform surface charge distribution, surface charge density sigma on a plane, we can form a Gaussian surface using a cylinder where we see that the electric field on the two sides will be pointing in opposite directions, but it will be a uniform field everywhere. The closed surface integral E dot dA gives us only contribution from top and bottom surfaces, side surface area vector points perpendicular to the electric field. So you can see here it points this way, this way, this way, this way. So it's basically pointing uh, in the plane of this uh, uh, plane of charge, but the area vector, uh, the electric field vector will be perpendicular to the plane of charge. Okay, so the two contributions give us 2EA, where A is what I call the area of one uh, side, it's pi A square. So 2EA is 2E times pi A square, that is charge enclosed, which is the area of the 
uh, or area enclosed by this Gaussian cylinder pi a square multiplied with the surface charge density sigma sigma pi a square pi a squares cancel I find the electric field on both sides being sigma over 2 epsilon 0 pointing to the right or to the left depending on which side we are looking at Another application is when we look at two parallel, infinite parallel plates of charge. One is positively charged, one is negatively charged. We see that the electric field inside has a, an additive contribution from the two plates, giving us sigma over epsilon zero pointing from the positively charged plate to the negatively charged plate. But outside they cancel and giving us a zero contribution.